As you already know, I'm one of the co-founders at Lifecycle Insights. What you might not know is that I spent 16 and a half years as an MSP. I'll get into that in a, little bit, in a little bit more detail here in just a few minutes. But the problem that we want to cover, the real challenge that MSPs experience, and one that was real to me in my MSP, is the fact that it was really hard to deliver, scale, to implement account management and VCIO across multiple humans in the same organization. I was able to deliver one experience as the owner. When I hired an account manager or a CIO, my customers got a completely different experience. That's kind of what led me to building Lifecycle Insights. We were looking to solve that problem that I had in my own MSP. As we go through this section, we're going to walk and talk through uh, kind of finding the right cadence to meet with our customers. We all know, everybody in the channel says QBR. What we really mean is uh, a business review at the cadence that matters to our customer. Um, as Marnie likes to say, we'll stop calling it a QBR when you guys stop Googling for it. But at the end of the day, we're going to find the right cadence and we're going to talk about how that really works. We'll talk about automating the client budget. Uh, we hear that an astronomical number of MSPs are not delivering a budget to their clients in most uh, of their QBRs. And without a budget, we really lack a bunch of the strategic roadmap that we need to move the conversation forward. And we'll also talk about the value of having a defined customer success process. Uh, Lifecycle Insights owns the only uh, real client success product in the MSP space. Where do we come from? Well, uh, we were founded in 2019 kind of to solve a problem that happened in my MSP. Uh, before we dive into that too deep, I just want to talk about one of the statistics that Dan mentioned a little bit earlier, and that was that 55% of MSPs really struggle to deliver QBRs. I was one of them. I was in, in your shoes. I had that exact same experience. Um, we built Lifecycle Insights in order to allow us to deliver our business reviews faster. We, we knew we had data kind of trapped in that PSA or, or IT glue uh, documentation type product. Um, we knew there was a lot of data in there. and We were unable to pull that data out, make it useful and actionable. Uh, what we were looking for was a way that we could uh, kind of standardize the output, standardize the reports, and have a real discussion with our customers about how budgetary uh, limitations and risk really impact their business. And what we really wanted at the end was to know that the data that went into ConnectWise was healthy when it came out, uh, which led us to build this product. We launched it at IT Nation 2019. Um, in 2023, we had the, uh, the great fortune to be uh, acquired by ScalePad. And today we have well over 1,000 partners, and we've been experiencing about 173% year-over-year growth. So folks are having amazing success with this product. And we've built a pretty awesome community around it, too. And we'll talk about that kind of as we wrap up. I want to touch on a couple of extra t statistics that, uh, that, that are important, I think, to this conversation. When Aaron was talking about um, profitability of MSPs, and I think this is super important, Q1 of this year, 31% of MSPs were not profitable. Um, that's, that's pretty scary. And when we dig a little bit deeper, what we learn is that the average profitability in, in, in the MSP industry is only about 6 to 7%. And we're talking about business owners who carry a lot of risk for their customers. They deserve to have a more profitable business than just 6 or 7%. And that's why this third data point from SLI is so important. The service leadership folks have determined that of the MSPs who are delivering QBRs, they average about a 13% higher margin, a higher EBITDA, than those who don't. And if you extrapolate just a little bit from here and realize that averages 6 to 7%, Delivering QBRs adds 13% to that. It's fairly early in the day, but I think I can do the math. That takes us to about a 20% margin, which, put, which puts you on the borderline of best in class, just because you showed up to do your QBRs. And I think that speaks to the power of the relationship that gets built and of the process that we can build uh, with a tool like Lifecycle Insights. One last statistic before we bore you guys to death with them, but uh, ScalePad's uh, state, of the, state of the QBR report revealed to us a couple of interesting numbers. About 36% of our partners are doing their quarterly business review quarterly. They're taking it literally, and they're, they're delivering it on that, uh, on that cadence, and that's great. Um, a, a good chunk doing them semi-annually. The, the part that worries me is that 35% of, of MSPs that were surveyed were only doing these whenever the client will take the meeting, right? whenever we get around to it. What we learned at Lifecycle Insights was that is most often a problem that's created by us delivering a quarterly business review to a customer that doesn't really bring the value that the client was looking for. We didn't bring a, a QBR to the table that included things like budget forecasts and risk management. We just showed up to talk to our client about the technology and ask them to spend a few more bucks with them next quarter or next month or next year. So let's dive into this whole MSPs not delivering budgets concept. 
we had a, a partner early on at Lifecycle Insights. His name was Raj, great human being. He came to us and said, hey, I see you guys are doing budgets. It takes me 10 hours to do a budget for my customer, for my biggest customer. Um, that's way too much time invested. I'm doing these quarterly. It's costing me 40 hours a year just for this one customer. And I've got several that I do that for. He says, if you can solve that problem, I'll be a very, very happy customer. I'm happy to report that today Raj does that budget in 45 minutes to an hour, and his clients get a great experience for it. But it goes a little bit further than that when you dig into how Lifecycle Insights actually does a budget, because we're helping you solve for inaccurate and missing data, as well as automating the process as we work our way through it. We'll even point out places where MSPs need to utilize our templates to add back additional asset types or things like contracts and subscriptions to really fill out the budget forecast. Because at the end of the day, an MSP who's not delivering what we call a total cost of ownership budget really isn't doing the job of a CIO. It's okay for an account manager to walk into the customer and say, hey, Mr. Customer, here's all the invoices I'm going to send you for the next 18 months. That's not okay when you're a CIO. A CIO is a C-level executive within an organization. They should run a budget for a department. Running a budget for a department includes things like uh, warranty renewals. It includes things like uh, the, the switches, the firewalls, the wireless access points, the things that aren't typically really well documented in an, at an MSP. And it also includes those, uh, those contracts and subscriptions. So we really want to make sure we fill that out. Uh, this removes a ton of surprises for our customers. It avoids places where there might be some wallet share conflict where the customer was supposed to pay for something else that we didn't know about. And so we got told no about our big upgrade project. But really, it just removes those surprises, which leads to happier customers. At the end of the day, it also it gives us an amazing ability to remove the sales pitch from the QBR conversation. And a lot of folks have told us, hey, uh, you know, my customer feels like I only go in there to ask them to spend more money. We even have one partner who says they used to call him Two Buck Chuck when he would walk in the door because they knew that he had one more agent he was trying to sell them. And it was going to be another $2, $2 an endpoint. We can remove all of that with a budget forecast and having the conversation about when it makes sense for the customer to address the risk that exists in their environment instead of asking them if they're going to buy our shiny new gadget. And so I think removing this level of friction with, a, with the correct total cost of ownership budget is one of the things that we as MSPs can do to really create that masterful experience for our customers. Speaking of delivering a great experience, let's talk about the client journey. When we were building Lifecycle Insights, we realized that a lot of client success issues were being surfaced at the QBR, but we didn't really have a way to track and, and see those coming. And that led us to really dig under the, under the hood a little bit further. And what we realized was, there was, not, was that there was not a single client, dedicated client success platform in the MSP space. So what did we do? We built one. You'll see the, the, uh, the math problem on the, on the screen, and it's pretty simple. Customer success equals client experience plus client outcomes. Our clients only see our relationship as successful when we remove the friction that happens in the relationship. That's the CX. And they see it as successful when we're using technology to improve business outcomes. That's that CO, right? So we're using technology to figure out how to ring the cash register faster and easier, help our clients be more secure and make more money. That is customer success, as long as we're delivering a good experience and removing friction in the process. So when we realized there were none of those tools, we kind of built one, and we now offer you the industry's first dedicated customer success tool. It has a lot of pretty, uh, pretty graphics and such in it, but really the goal of it is to use the data that exists inside the platform in order to be able to surface things that might have otherwise gone unnoticed. You'll see these little dots are color-coded all, all over the map. Um, these are to identify the risk of a client who might churn. This gives us the ability to see far in advance a customer who may be problematic, who might be uh, likely to entertain a conversation with another customer and give us the ability, or with another MSP, and give us the ability to perform some CPR on that account. We also map the clients using health and effort metrics to identify problem accounts where we might have an issue where someone might cancel an agreement because we're not doing something right, or maybe a really inexpensive agreement is chewing up too much of our time give you visibility into that, and then you can you know, use the resources at your MSP to help solve for some of those problems. And we also use this graph to, uh, to help you identify what your QBR cadence ought to look like. We have a great little exercise that we walk MSPs through to help use this graph to tell you which clients deserve to be met with monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, annually, et cetera. And we can help you build out and maintain that, uh, that schedule. 
So at the end of the day, what, we re what it really boils down to is that our customer success product leverages data that already exists in your VCIO experience in the VCIO tool and through the integrations that we use. It helps you identify where there are revenue opportunities that don't currently exist. We actually have an entire stack alignment component in there that'll help you identify places where you're out of standard. It would be easier to support the customer. They'll probably consume less of your time and they'll probably buy be buying the right product from you instead of buying the wrong product from somebody else. And lastly, we really work hard to use client goals in order to uh, support the strategic initiatives that we want to do. Uh, if, it's, if we've learned nothing from working with a thousand partners, it's that when our goal lines up with our client goal, they're way, way more likely to say yes. So all of these are the reasons that uh, together, Lifecycle Manager and Lifecycle Insights really provide the most complete and most powerful asset lifecycle management tool in the space. Uh, the VCIO platform is the best bar none. We hear from everyone the level of automation that we deliver saves their VCIO's time hours and hours and hours a week. So if you're looking to create a masterful experience and finally deliver the QBR that your customers deserve, take a look at these products. And if you're, if you're using them today, you need a little help, you need to, need to move things forward just a little bit. We also have some links that we'll throw up in a little bit uh, where you can engage with us and make sure that you get some extra time. So what does that mean to you right now? Well, how can we take some of this data and make it actionable? Well, if you're in that emerging MSP category, we really want you to uh, start to think about how we can turn this into a win for you. So maybe we don't have the time and the energy to give every client a quarterly business review every single quarter. So what we need to do is figure out who gets quarterly and who gets maybe less than quarterly, right? So if we can get our key clients, maybe that 20% of our client base that generates 80% of the revenue, get them on a quarterly cadence, and then deliver to the rest of our clients a budget, an asset list, a user list, some supporting documentation that shows them what we're doing and what we're protecting and how we're maintaining their environments, that puts you in a better place and it really sets you up to become that growth MSP who can add on to that basic budget and supporting docs with a little more standard experience, a little more customized experience for that customer. Right? We'll be able to replace the conversation about when does Billy or Sally over in accounting get a new PC with a budget forecast that says everyone gets a new PC every 48 or every 60 months. That becomes the core of your product and of your process at this point. We'll be able to enforce stack alignment across the majority of your customer base as you start to standardize. And that's super important because we all know stack alignment leads to profitability. But then as we find our way to becoming that enterprise MSP, we're really looking at how do we scale and how do we manage the complexities of multiple account managers, multiple customer success managers, multiple VCIOs, right? But the tools that we're talking about today are gonna to give you the KPIs and the metrics so that you know what winning looks like and you know how to manage these humans. And you can actually scale this across multiple people and with some of our most successful MSPs across multiple regions. So customer facing reports are gonna become standardized at this point, and the beauty of it is we can shorten the amount of time it takes to create them, and we can delegate access to those, uh, uh, to create those reports across the company. So we can have a less expensive resource than that BCIO, the most expensive person in the room, building out those resources. So if you wanna know how to engage with us a little bit more, um, if you're an existing Lifecycle Insights user, you'll be able to uh, join us for new to Lifecycle Insights. We run on office hours every single week, and we regularly run things like VCIO Bootcamp, uh, the link at the bottom, and they'll throw that in the chat for you. We'll take you to our calendar where you can attend any of these individual events. So with that, I'd like to bring back the man with the second best hair in today's broadcast, Luis Geraldo, the customer, uh, customer experience, chief customer experience officer at, uh, at ScalePath.